afternoon, everyone. Uh, I'm glad to be here, and uh, I'm very fortunate that Serge uh, spoke before me because uh, here uh, this afternoon I'm going to share a, a story that uh, changed lives, and it's also it has also become my story. So let me start. So the Philippine Funds for Little Kids is now renamed as the Yellow Boat Project. Uh, before I start, can I ask everyone to stand up? We're going to do a short exercise. And yeah, the organizers have approved it. I'm going to count one to three. And when I say three, can we all jump? Are you ready? Yes. Are you sure? OK. I'm going to count. One, two, three. Thank you. You may now sit down. That's it. No, kidding aside, um, I always ask uh, the audience to stand up and jump when I share our story because it now symbolizes you're all on board, the yellow boat of hope. So let me take you to the story. There are no accidents in life. Does anyone know who said that? It comes from the greatest philosopher of our time, the Master Ugwe from the movie called Kung Fu Panda. It's one of my favorite quotes in life because I, f I believe that there are really no accidents. And I feel that it's not an accident that we are all here today, this afternoon. Um, I come from Mindanao. And you know, five years ago, I thought that I've heard of all stories of children who struggle to go to school. Uh, when I was growing up, I used to walk 10 minutes to school. And I, I remember I kept complaining that, you know, I had to walk 10 minutes under the sun. And you know, these children uh, in China have to, glow, have to go through these uh, cliffs every day just to get to school. And you know, we've heard of all these stories. Children have to go through muds, have to climb mountains, have to bike, have to cross bridges. But it was a story in uh, Sambuanga City. So that's where it's located. Uh, five years ago, I was also in a summit uh, similar like this. And during the sidelines of that summit, a story was shared to me uh, that transformed my life. And uh, so the story of uh, the picture of the little girl, her name is Najra. Uh, five years ago, when the story was shared to me, uh, Juljimar, the person who shared to me, told me that uh, it was 7 in the morning. They were visited the seaweed farming community. And they encountered a group of kids who were swimming. And you know, the way they describe it, they, were, they had a plastic bag with one hand and they were swimming with the other hand. And when they got tired, they would put the, the plastic bag with, the other, with their other hand and swim with the other hand. And then, so they got curious, you know, what the hell was the, were, there, was, were, there, were these kids doing so early in the morning and, you know, swimming. And so they asked one of the kids and the kids, as if insulted, said, can't you see we're going to school? And that's when they realized that the, the school kids were actually carrying their, you know, they, they wrapped their school bags in plastic bags or it contained immediately their school supplies like pencils, uh, notebooks, so that doesn't get wet. And, you know, up until this day, I never realized that, you know, there are children who have to swim to school. I often joke now that we often hear of kids, I hope none of you have done that, uh, we often hear of kids in Manila to skip school, to go swimming. But here were kids who went swimming so that they can go to school. So, you know, go on my flight back to Manila from Sambuanga. The story really tugged at my heart. And, you know, coming from Mindanao, I felt for the kids. And I couldn't really shake off the story. So that night, um, I was in my bed. I was staring at my laptop. And uh, I saw my Facebook account. By the way, who's on Facebook? Can you raise your hand? OK, I think it's almost everyone. Who's still on Friendster? <laughs> that closed down. But you know, almost all of us, it has become ubiquitous uh, you know, in the country and in the world to use social media tools. And so I was, I was looking at my laptop, and I saw my Facebook account. And I just felt I needed to share the story to get it out of my system. And so I just shared a two-liner. Uh, you know, I just came from Sambonga City, and I heard of an amazing story where children swim to school. And I, I was able to fall asleep. But the next day, to my surprise, a lot of my friends started asking, how can we help? How can we help? How can we help? And one of them immediately gave 5,000 pesos. And within one week, uh, we had 70,000 pesos. And that started what was then called as the Sambuanga Funds for Little Kids. 
But of course, at that time, the story was just shared to me. And so, you know, I got kind of scared that we had some money. Uh, we didn't have a solution. I haven't seen the community. So I called another friend who's now my co-founder. His name is Doc Anton Lim. And so he went to the community. He talked to the kids. He talked to the principal. And he got to know the parents. And that's when we decided uh, this, the most simple solution, uh, and you know, it would be less costlier than building a bridge, which would cost in the millions, was just to give them you know, a simple yellow boat. We got our inspiration from the yellow school bus, which takes kids you know, from their homes uh, to the school, and then vice versa. And that started you know, sort of the yellow boat project. Uh, we started giving boats. But um, you know how many islands the Philippine has? Does anyone know? How many? Okay, the official number is now at 7,500. So since we're an archipelago, uh, when, when the bloggers, when you know, my friends, the, and then you know, traditional media like TV, radio, print, uh, picked it up, we started getting a lot of calls that there are also swimming kids here in Masbate, in Negros, in Iloilo, and elsewhere in the Philippines. And, you know, that started, we used Facebook again, we went back to Facebook, we went back to um, other social media tools to raise funds and bring awareness to these communities. And to date, we've given out close to 2,200 boats in around 62 communities around the Philippines. And, you know, so it made me realize um, that a single Facebook status can make a difference. So these social media tools are not just you know, to post you know, what we've eaten today or if we're with a celebrity. It made me realize that we can use technology to bring about change, to make a difference in the lives of others. And that started uh, five year, uh, five, yeah, uh, right now after five years where we're a registered foundation with the Philippine Securities Ex Exchange Commission. And I never would have imagined that, you know, from that single Facebook status, it would launch a boat, a single boat, and then to a thousand boats. Uh, our project really grew because of, uh, after Typhoon Yolanda, Yihayan, uh, a lot of fishermen went to us and asked for boats, and uh, we found them good donors. And, you know, so it's, it's sort of a single Facebook status that's, that launched a thousand boats and, you know, created an organization. And... So that's really what I wanted to share with you uh, this afternoon, that, you know, little things can make a di big difference. And uh, I'm going to end with this quote. Uh, it's actually our organization's uh, operating philosophy. And when you donate to us, it's on our official receipt. And it goes like this. The great thing a little lamb can do, which the big sun cannot do, is give light at night. It shows us that no one is superior by size, but by purpose. If we cannot do great things, we can surely do small things in a great way because little things make a big difference to God. Thank you.